Hey everybody, I'm Carly Watson and I'm here talking with Will a little bit about the upcoming summer and the Spartan Scholars. So Will, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself for those that don't know. Well, I'm a guy with a new cool headset, so let's begin there. But above and beyond that, I'm the head debate coach here at Michigan State University and I've worked at the SDI for many, many years and excited to do it again this summer. All of them, right? <laughs> All of them, yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about the format for the Spartan Scholars? Well, in the summer of 2019, we really began to work on online options, including having a debate about Taiwan being judged by someone who was in Taiwan. And at the end of that process, I think a group of us huddled together and decided in 2019 that we wanted to create a Spartan Scholars program that had a significant online instructional process from the get-go. So we're very excited to sort of lead the summer with an online program that will take the lectures that a lot of camps offer, but allow students to review them at their own time, to set up practice speeches that might logically be offered in the first week of any debate camp, and to have students record those speeches and get the feedback of several different faculty members so that they can kind of have an opportunity to interact with more than one narrow set of instructors. From there, we see a big component of this summer being an improvement in the community's learning curve for how to do an online debate. And we've already had SDI students do that in the past and we're looking forward to sort of making that an even larger component of what we offer in 2020. Yeah, so you talked a little bit about it. Can you talk more about like the advantages that you see generally to the online components of the SDI? Sure, well, I think all of it starts with a broader commitment to access. We always have students that contact us every summer and have complicated busy summers where it would be nice if they could have an online component that would allow them to be at home um, for a portion of their summer experience. And then I would say on top of that, the online component offers a whole new realm of instruction. Not only, as I mentioned a moment ago, could you get access to more than just your own set of lab leaders with greater ease. I also think that you can be judged by Professor Mike Horowitz, who is a political science prof at the University of Pennsylvania, who doesn't have time as a former NDT champion to come and teach at our camp, but would gladly offer online instruction. The same happened for Alyssa Risa, our former championship level debater, went on to be at Harvard, who was working in Taiwan this summer. She was able to kind of give us some of her time. So there's just more different ways to be exposed to a broader range of perspectives. Yeah, do you think that, um, you kind of talked a little bit about the flexible schedule and stuff. Can you talk about what kind of a typical online day would look like? So we're currently envisioning about five days of what would be lab time. Or five hours, you mean? Five hours, I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, of typical lab time per day. and. The nice thing about online instruction is that it affords you the ability to have a greater flexibility. So certainly our instructors would be fine if someone submitted an extra redo speech, but uh, we're looking at about five hours of either practice speeches or in kind of classroom discussions in the online environment. I feel like there's kind of a general concern that what's going to happen is that there wouldn't be enough rigorous curriculum with this model and right. and that five hours of home time isn't really equivalent to five hours of on-campus time. Can you talk a little bit about how you're kind of envisioning navigating that or if you kind of think that's a fair criticism? Well, I, I think that the best instructors generate enthusiasm and enthusiasm is contagious. We've all sat in a brick and mortar classroom and 
couldn't wait for it to end. And on the other hand, we've all had coursework that we were really excited to attend. So if the curriculum doesn't feel rigorous or exciting, that's on our instructors. And while I interpersonally like our instructors, I deeply respect the fact that our instructors have a, a pretty strong track record of getting people pumped about debate. So I do think that there's an appeal to a flexible schedule. People exist in different time zones and they exist with different life commitments. And we exist in a universe where a lot of students have very busy summers. But I just have a feeling that at the end of those five hours, if our instructors are on the game, on their game, they'll, they'll have, they'll create a situation where the students want to do a little bit more. Yeah, so those same instructors kind of spent a lot of 2019, you talked about this, um, doing beta testing, and then you and to some extent I have done some testing since the 2019 SDI. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the things that we've tried out, what we've learned, where we go from there? Yeah, I feel great about the beta testing that we've done both in past summers and the online scrimmages that we've done in the college community. And so if someone's sort of interested in spending a summer being an early adopter, uh, a first mover, if you will, on this technology, I feel like we have a lot of experience and something to offer. And, and an interesting way to think about it might be, would you rather buy the first iteration of iPhone or would you rather have waited until the iPhone 8 came out? Your technology and your level of familiarity is radically different when you are a first mover. And we have experimented with a variety of different models. Um, in future sessions like this, I'll walk you through the ability to debate off of a television monitor or the ability to solely use your computer or what platforms um, we would recommend, et cetera. All of that is, is stuff that we've spent a great deal of time thinking about. And I think it really could be an asset to the students that are beginning to dabble in online debate experiences. Yeah, you talked a little bit about platforms. What are you kind of envisioning for platforms for the 2020 online components? I think for the debates themselves, we would use Zoom, which is the platform that you and I are talking on right now. And one of the reasons that I'm attracted to that platform is that it is incredibly accessible. You can read some articles about the MSU debate team and the fantastic work we've done with zoom.com to try to help create a more accessible environment for students on the debate team that have hearing challenges. But in a broader sense, it's accessible because it's low cost and we have a great deal of familiarity with sort of sharing that lower cost and passing it on to students that are interested in our summer program. So we will likely lean on Zoom for our platform for most things, but we'll reserve the right if we Skype in someone from Taiwan to use a different platform like Skype. Yeah, well, thank you for answering questions. And for anybody who's kind of thinking about it or wants to know more, there's obviously a lot more information at the website, debate.msu.edu, and you can click over to the SDI side. But thank you for taking the time to answer some of my questions. Have a good day. You too.